Hi, my name is Laura Carson and welcome to my studio. In this tutorial, I'll be talking about how to make this chest out of matchboxes. So let's get started by reviewing the supplies you're going to need. First, I'm going to start with the tools you'll need. A cutting mat, a paper cutter, a box cutter, scissors, a tool like an awl or a large needle to poke a hole, a ruler, a pair of snips, and a pair of needle nose pliers. Next I'm going to go over the products that you'll be using to construct the chest. We'll start with a package of 10 diamond brand matchboxes. Each matchbox measures 1 and 3 8 inches wide by a quarter inch tall by 2 and a sixteenth inch long. Next you're going to need some glue paper glue and glue that works with a non-porous surface or metal. Next, stamp pads and markers that coordinate with your paper. Then paint, acrylic paint will work just fine. You'll need some chipboard that is relatively stiff it might have a little give to it, but it still needs to be stiff. A piece of foam core, it doesn't matter what color you're going to be covering it with paper. A small piece of cardstock. Rubber bands. Pen or pencil. A piece of sandpaper. and a piece of paper towel. So now for the fun stuff. These are the products that I use that you can find at Alpha Stamps. The papers are from the Printery Collection. These are some of my favorite papers. I love the combination of the black and the cream and the off-white and the green. I thought they worked really well for a shabby chic look. Then for feet, I used these brass feet that I antiqued and I'll be showing you how I did that. For the handles, I used these glass drops, beads. They already have the uh, loop on them so that makes them really easy to work with. And then to decorate the sides, I used a series of frames, brass frames and also a frame for the top. And then in those frames, I used pictures from a couple of the Alpha Stamps collage sheets, uh, images from the Clio one and images from the Drama Queen sheet. Then for the top, I used a brass handle. And then to give the chest a look of hardware, I used these small fleur de lises but another option is also these fold over bales, and I'll talk about that later on in the tutorial. So let's get started and let me show you how to make one of these chests. The match boxes that I use come in 10 packs and are made by Diamond. Each of the individual match boxes measures 1 and 3 8 inch wide by a quarter inch tall by 2 and a 16 inches long. Um, you can find them virtually everywhere, grocery stores, Walmart, Target, dollar stores. Very inexpensive. I've seen them range in prices from 59 cents for the whole pack to 97 cents. So you're going to want to start by breaking your pack apart, getting rid of your matches, and then taking the drawer out of the casing. Then the first thing we're going to do is work on the drawers. Now the boxes you buy might come in different, uh, made out of different materials. You see this one looks a lot like chipboard, it's very porous. This one comes in like a glossy finish. So the first step is to ink the areas of the drawers that you're going to see when you pull your drawer out. And so what we need to do is use an ink that fits the different type of surface. So if your match boxes are glossy, then you need to use a product like Stays On that is for non-porous surfaces. If your box is like this that has the surface like a chipboard or heavy cardstock, 
then of course you can use any ink that works with paper. Now the way I like to approach this is that I like to start with an ink pad and then use my ink pad to cover the larger part of the surface. So we want to get the side, the front, and then the other side. Now you can use whatever color you want to to match your paper. I just like to use black, it matches the paper, and uh, it's just a nice neutral. And then I like to get just the tops of the front and the sides. And then once I've used the pad, I like to come back in with a marker and just get the nooks and crannies that the pad can't get. Just get it all touched up. There may be areas I didn't ink. Let me ink that a little bit more with the pad. I'll come back in with the marker. Now the reason we're using ink is because we don't want the surface to get any thicker and if we used paint it would make the surfaces thicker and it would make it hard for you to pull the drawers out of the casings. They're already pretty snug. And then I come back in and just do all the little bits and pieces. Now you want to continue to do that for all ten of the matchbox drawers and put those aside to dry and then when you're done with that, you're going to come in with the casings and just do the edges. Because it's only the little edge that you're going to see when the match boxes are all put together. Then go ahead and continue to do the casings, all ten of them, until they're done. And then also put them aside and let them dry. At this point, all your drawers and the casings should be inked and dry. So the next thing we're going to work on is putting paper in the inside of your drawer. Now if you're using the same matchboxes that I am, then the measurements for the paper should be 2 and 15 16 inch by 2 and a 16th inch. If you're not using the same boxes, then you're going to need to come in and measure the bottom of your drawer. And whatever your measurement is, you probably want to take about a sixteenth of an inch off of that because the inside is going to be slightly smaller than the outside. So you'll want to cut ten pieces of paper according to the measurement, either yours or mine. And I like to use different patterns so that, that way every time you open a drawer there's a different, um, a different pattern paper. And then all you're going to do is take your glue, whatever paper glue you like to use. I'm using Tombow Multi Combo. And then you'll just glue your papers into the drawers and put them aside to dry. And you'll continue to do that for all 10 drawers. So now you should have glued all the paper in the bottom of the 10 drawers and the next step is we're going to do the decorative paper on the front of the drawer. Now you could measure the front of the door, drawer and cut each one separately but to me it's easier just to glue the front of the drawer onto a piece of paper, let it dry and then trim around the drawer. So I've started by cutting up different pattern pieces, just making sure that the pieces are bigger than the front of the drawer and I like just like for the inside of the drawer I like to use different patterns. Then I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to glue the front of the drawer and then I'm going to put the front of the drawer 
onto the paper. And if you've got a straight edge on one end, you can just line up the top of the drawer with that straight edge. Just press, I mean it doesn't have to be because you can still trim it, but just press, get it on there, and then put it aside to dry. And here I have one that's already dried. So I'm gonna come in here now with a pair of scissors and just trim right against the edge of the drawer. So now you can see I've covered the front of the drawer. And the last step that I like to do, it's optional, I like to come in with my stamp pad and then just ink the very edge of the paper and I think it just kind of frames it nicely with the black. So just very carefully come back in and I don't know if you can see that. So you'll want to go through and do that for all 10 of your drawers and then let everything dry. Now we're ready to start adding the knobs or pulls to the front of our drawers. There are lots of options of what you can use. I've used a bead and an eye pin. And you can see in the back the eye pin is curled. You could also use a brad. Anything would work as long as it's big enough for you to grab with your fingers and pull. And it's something that goes all the way through the drawer. The reason for that is that if you just glue something on the front of the drawer, the drawers fit very tightly in the casings and so eventually you'll end up pulling the handle away from the drawer with the paper. So you really do need something that goes all the way through. Now the way I find is the easiest way to do this is to create a template. That way, if you create a template and use that to mark the position on all of the drawers, then all of your handles will line up. So I have this cardstock template that's the size of the front of the drawer. Then I come in with a pin and mark the center of the template. Next you need a sharp object like an awl like I have here or maybe a needle and you want to go in and actually poke a hole through your template. Now you'll take your template, place it against your box, and come back in with a pen and mark the hole. So now I've transferred the hole to the front of the box. You'll want to go through and do this for all 10 boxes. Then once you have all your holes marked, you want to come in with your sharp object again, like this awl or the pin, or uh, needle, I'm sorry. And you'll just go in and poke a hole through the box. And depending on how big you need the hole to be, if it's a brad, you might need a bigger hole. But with this eye pin, it's a pretty small hole then just poke your hole. And you'll want to go through and do that for all your boxes. Now I'm going to show you how I made my handles. I started with an eye pin. I opened up the loop with a pair of needle nose. Put the bead on the loop and close the loop back up again. Then I added a spacer. And the reason I did this is I wanted it to sit out a little bit further from the front of the box. Um, as the bead is round at the bottom, I thought that would make it hang better. So then I just insert the eye pin into the box, 
Then I hold it up against the front. And now I'm going to snip away the excess. I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch. Then I come back in with my needle nose pliers and I turn it, make a little loop, and I'm going to turn this around so you can see it. And then I'll also turn it up so you can see the front. Okay, and that's it. So you just need to do that on all 10 of your drawers. Now we're ready to begin gluing together our matchboxes to create the chest. The first thing we're going to do is glue together two of the matchboxes. An important thing here is that when you glue these together, you need to make sure that they are absolutely square in the front and the back. So it's flush up in front and it's flush in the back. If you don't make sure that everything is flush, your chest is not going to end up being square. The other thing you want to be sure of is make sure your drawers are all going in the same direction so that you don't end up gluing things together like this. I say that because I've done that. So just use a paper glue. Apply the glue to one side. And then push the two together making sure that everything is absolutely flush, front and back. And then you want to put it aside and let it dry. Now the reason that you would not continue to glue more boxes on this is that until the glue is dry, there's always a chance that the boxes might shift and you'd end up not being square. Once your boxes are dry, you have two sets of two, and you'll want to continue to do this for all the boxes, so you'll end up with five sets of two. Then you're going to want to start gluing them on top of each other. And the same things apply. First you want to make sure that the drawers are all going in the same direction. Then when you put the one on top of the other, you want to make sure that they're really flush. Now front, back, and sides. Everything is squared up perfectly. You might want to hold them for a little bit just until the glue gets a little tacky. And then one of the things that I like to do once it gets to that point is I put a rubber band around the boxes and that holds them in place and it keeps them nice and square until they're dry. Then you're going to continue doing this. Just continue gluing another set of boxes together, letting it dry, then gluing another set of boxes together until you've got all 10 boxes glued together.